pollution is affecting human health in an unprecedented way. Every hour, there are almost 240 deaths caused by outdoor fine particles emitting from human activities. And many of these deaths are occurring in Asia. Peel and burning smoke in Southeast Asia is of special concerns. It's recurrent and transboundary. During August to October each year, the smoke emitting from the red burning hot spots, as shown on the slide, travels across borders, affecting many people in this region. Our study shows that inhaled tiny particles can translocate from the lungs to many other parts of the bodies, and they are also accumulated in the brain. But we know little about health impacts of acute exposure to the transboundary peel and burning smoke. The current established health effects of air pollutants are not applicable because they are the result of a long-term exposure to city pollutants. To examine the health impacts caused by transboundary smoke, one question is often asked. How do we know that the problems at the receptor sites are indeed caused by the transboundary smoke instead of local emissions from vehicles, chimneys, etc.? Although it's challenging to trace the smoke and see its transformation in real time, we can use fingerprints of individual emission sources to address the question. For example, a signature compound called level glucosan is mainly emitted during vegetation and biomass burning, and so can be used as the fingerprint to quantify transboundary vegetation burning smoke at receptor sites. By integrating laboratory and field studies, we identify more signature compounds of a peel and burning smoke. Now, we can use a suite of fingerprint compounds together allows us better quantify the transboundary smoke particles in urban environment. Now, these data can be used with existing forecasting model, better telling us where would the smoke would move and where the, when they may reach receptor sites. Measuring these compounds can also tell us that uh, where the smoke are and how much they are in the receptor sites. For example, last year, during the very heavy smoke haze, we can identify more than 85% of fine particles are introduced by the transboundary smoke. Now, measuring these fingerprints can also help us to understand other issues, such as whether the smoke moves aloft frozen in the ice cloud before further convective mixing. Now, although we have a better quantified data to examine health effects, peel and burning continues. It's not easy to stop the burning because of a political, social, economical issues. So what can we do? We wear a mask when we go out, or we stay indoors, closing the window, turning on the air conditioning system. These, however, would not protect us from breathing in smoky air when there's no clean ambient air to refresh the indoor environment. So, a potential new approach is enabling buildings to clean up the air, removing air pollutants by applying a new coating materials onto building envelope. Our study shows that more than 70% of the major acidic gases pollutants can be removed in two hours or more quickly. Even soot or black carbon, one of the most stubborn air pollutants, can be removed. This changes dark surface area to a much cleaner appearance, as shown on the top of the slide. This also means that by using the coating material, Le San Buddha will no longer have a black nose and the angel's face will be fairer. Imagine when there is large enough building surface area coated with the new material to mitigate air pollutants, buildings in large cities are transformed to contributors of a better urban environment. That's a nice picture that we would like to have. 
So the question is, how can we acquire such large building surface area to deploy the new coating materials? Thank you.